Hello, my name is Steven and I am a flight attendant and this is my second video. I'm kind of excited. Um, the first one actually got some views, which is pretty exciting. Who knew? Uh, but um, so I want to, sh to uh, share a little bit of information uh, about crash pads and my own experience with crash pads. I really wish I had prepared more uh, before going to training or at least researched crash pads more. Uh, so uh, let me share some of my experience, just in case you have not done your own your, uh, research or you're on your way to training. So what is a crash pad? A crash pad is not an apartment. It's more about what it's not. So it's not a place to live. It's not your apartment. And you're certainly not, not going to have a lot of privacy, privacy, private space. Um, so you will, uh, if you're commuting, for example, you will fly in that day before, the night before your trip, uh, maybe go to your crash pad, sleep, take a nap, prepare for your trip, go on your trip, come back, sleep, crash, meal prep, whatever, and prepare for your next trip. Your days off uh, or the areas time between trips, you may go home, you might want to travel for leisure, take advantage of those flight benefits, uh, but you're not gonna live in your apartment uh, when you're not working. Uh, it's not an apartment. It's a crash pad. Uh, so you'll crash there between trips. Um, a big mistake uh, people make commonly, in my experience, is, is mistaking a crash pad for an apartment. Um, it makes for an awkward situation for other people who are treating it like a crash pad. Uh, cold versus hot. A cold bed is one that you rent for the time that you rent it. Uh, so if you rent it for the month or for a six month period, however your landlord wants it, um, it is your bed. No one else is sleeping in it. In a hot bed, I have no idea. I, in reality, I would never do it. A hot bed, I guess, is something you would um, be renting the possibility of a bed, <laughs> I guess. So, you know, after a trip, you come back to your crash pad and if there's a bed available, it's yours. If there's no bed available, I don't know what you would do. Do you sleep on the floor or do you go to a hotel or something? So if you have had experiences with hot beds, please leave a comment below, like drop a comment so that we all know what it's like and why you might have appreciated it or why it was a mistake. Um, but a cold bed is definitely the way I would go. Start looking the moment you know where you're gonna be based. Uh, I wish I had started to look sooner, but I knew I was going to be based in Vegas six weeks before my training date. So I spent those six weeks really preparing, memorizing schematics, things like that. I wish I had tucked a little time aside to research crash pads in Las Vegas. Um, so start looking into it before training. Um, and while you're in training, talk to your classmates. Maybe you guys want to go in and share a hotel room before um, finding an apartment together or finding crash pads. Um, you can go in, like I just said, you know, uh, share an apart, uh, share a, a hotel room. One of my instructors suggested, you know, four people in a hotel room uh, where most of you may not be there at the same time would be really cost effective and handy. Um, some people who didn't have a crash pad right away would um, crash at the airport and they would sleep in the quiet room, in the crew room, and then you know shower at the gym that we have at the, at the uh, airport. It, it just didn't sound like a really comfortable life. But um, So start looking the moment you know where you're based. Because um, uh, they go quick. Crash pads go quick. Uh, I'm based, as I've said, in Las Vegas. And um, I think Allegiant has a base here. We have a base here. Frontier just ha opened a base here, and I'm sure someone else is based here too. Frontier just opened, so we, a boatload of them are coming to Las Vegas. I know we've hired, I don't know, 75, 100 flight attendants, if not more, in the last six months, eight months. Um, so there's just a limited number of crash pads. So look the minute you know you need one. Uh, let me look at my notes here. <clears throat> oh, finding one. Crashpad411.com was a website I went to. I think it's $10 for a six month membership, but you get to look at pictures and, and read reviews, things like that. So I think about investing in that. Uh, Crashpad Connections, I think is a Facebook page 
that you might want to join and um, ask about crash pads there. Each city, in my experience, big one, a big city has a Facebook page that you might look into. And most airlines, I'm sure, have a questions and answers page set up by flight attendants. And my uh, airline has that kind of idea. And we ask all sorts of questions. But, you know, if someone needs a crash pad or someone knows of someone who needs one, we you know, just pop that up there. And frequently enough, you'll get an answer. A lot of flight attendants understand what it's like to be new and will offer up space in their own apartment. You know, you just never know where help is going to come from. But you're not going to get help if you don't ask for it. So um, start chatting, start talking. Um, let's see. Crew rooms will frequently have uh, notifications about crash pads and stuff. Cost. All right, so my first crash pad was 200 a month. It was on the outskirts of Las Vegas, and I would spend between... I'd say $20 and $40 a trip on Uber to get to the airport. And those days I sat ready reserve, which means I'm just sitting in the airport for five hours, um, to spend between, you know, 30, 40 or more in Uber just to go to and from the airport got to be expensive. So my crash pad was only $200, but the cost that it, it of travel to and from work without a car made it really ridiculous, especially for what I got in that crash bed. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Um, so I'd say between 200 and 350 is probably the normal range. If you're living in New York or Chicago, San Francisco, LA, you may pay more uh, for a crash bed. You do get what you pay for. And I'm going to stress that enormously. You will get what you pay for. You get a cheap crash pad, you're going to get cheap, 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 and really bad experience. So um, invest what you can. And so clearly, if you haven't gone to training yet, start saving money because uh, you'll need it. Um, it's usually month to month. I don't know of any crash pads that rent for six months at a time. So it's usually month to month. Some want a deposit, some don't. My, uh, I think both crash pads I've been to have wanted a small deposit. Nothing ridiculous. Uh, and like I said, you want to get a crash pad close enough to work that you can either take public transport some folks like to play tricks, and you know, if they live near a hotel, they'll take the shuttle from the, the uh, hotel to the airport. I could never do that, but um, so try. To, I try to find something close to the airport. Um, let's see. I think. Let's see. Oh, you know, again, remember this is not your apartment. I think the um, the trouble I had with my second place was primarily with because I love the people that were there but um it's hard to live with friends especially the friends you've made under such situations as training so you know the so let me share you my experience with what I I had with crash pads the in training I, I did chat with one of my classmates about how I was not looking forward to sleeping in a bunk bed because I just knew it would happen to me um I'm a big person for a bunk bed um, and of course, um, she said, you know, I've got an extra room, your own bathroom. It's going to be so much fun. It's three and a half weeks. We talked about how much fun it would be for me to live with her in in a crash pad. And then the day I got to Las Vegas in the airport with my two pieces of luggage, my rollerboard, my rolling tote and my lunch bag, she says, I'm sorry, the room is no longer available. My mother-in-law and sister-in-law are moving in. So I am effectively homeless in Las Vegas. I know nobody. I'm losing my mind. Um, I, don't I don't handle that kind of stress well. It was really unpleasant. Thankfully, um, I did go onto Facebook to our class page and there was a call to action and people helped me out. And I ended up in a crash pad at the very limits of Las Vegas. It was on, uh, near the intersection of Blue Diamond and Fort Apache. It's out there. And as I was just telling you earlier, I spent a boatload on getting to and from work. Especially when you're sitting ready reserved and you're not even going on a trip, you know. Um, and the place was just falling apart. It was a cheaply made building. It was like the, the stair fronts were literally falling off the front. It was awful. There were ants. There were so many ants in the kitchen that it would move. That Like, I'd swear they were moving kitchen furniture. And there were three people who were living there full time uh, that weren't flight attendants, which is really 
a, a red flag. And they smoked pot probably 12 hours a day in the garage, which is right next to the room that I slept in. Um, that first crash pad, I swear the guy below me in the crash, the bunk, because I wasn't a bunk bed, of course, top bunk. I swear he was having sex with his girlfriend. I mean, it was while I was sleeping. Um, it was just unpleasant through and through and through. So after three weeks, <laughs> I found uh, just by word of mouth, um, another crash pad closer to the airport. It was 300 a month, but it was uh, less expensive to Uber to work. I could take a bus if I gave myself the time. I never gave myself the time, so I took Uber. Um, and for 300 a month, you know, it included everything, cable, internet, utilities, there's washer and dryer on the premises. She provided linens. Um, my bed was a twin bed by myself, uh, but it was tucked into, and it was, I thought the best place for the bed, but because it gave me some privacy, but it was a small walk-in closet. The irony is not lost on me, folks, that I was in a closet. I haven't been in a closet in a long time, um, but it, <laughs> It had blackout curtains in the front of instead of doors. So I could actually just, you know, get in there and change my clothes and, and have some privacy. Um, but it was um, with six or seven other flight attendants, most of them girls. And um, not that them being girls was a problem, but it just got to be really crowded. Um, there were a whole bunch of girls. Uh, I learned a lot about hair. <laughs> I learned everything you ever want to know about closures, I'll tell you that. Um, but the dishes in the sink, you know, there'd be dishes in the sink for three weeks, no lie. Um, people sleeping on the couch, one of my favorite people, she slept on the couch, she had a bed, but she slept on the couch every night and, and every morning and it, it made just moving around the kitchen awkward, you know? Um, I won't even go into, she's a very nice girl but her mother, and her mother died, which is tragic, but she left her mother's ashes on the, like, on a table in the, in the dining room near where you'd eat, you know? And I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know, but if that was the best place for her mother's ashes, but it did make it for a little, little awkward situation. Um, so after about five months, six months, I ended up um, deciding that it was worth investing in my own apartment. So Las Vegas is pretty cheap to live here. This is one of the reasons I chose Vegas. Um, I have a super studio, which I'll give you a quick tour. I love my studio. It's $5.25 a month. I know, it's practically free. Um, it's pretty close to the airport, so getting there is really easy. Um, it, in, it includes everything except for electricity. It includes Wi-Fi. It's like good hotel Wi-Fi. It's not great Wi-Fi, but it's free. And I really like it. It's wonderful to be able to come home and like just take my clothes off, get comfortable, you know, relax and play music and not worry about it, like keeping somebody up and not hearing, oh, the worst part of, of crash pad, the worst part, oh my God, crew scheduling. You know, crew scheduling is bad enough for you. Multiply that by crew scheduling calling at all hours. So you hear everyone's cell phone going off at all times. You hear everyone's conversation. You'll end up seeing everyone in their underwear. I won't share with you the extent of lady parts that I have seen. And I haven't seen lady parts since I was born. <laughs> so there's there's awkward parts about living in a crash bed. If you can handle that, if you're like brand new out of college, you're probably used to this situation. Well, let me give you a tour of my place first. So let me give you a little tour. Let me get up. Um, this is my living room. That's a little Ikea lamp. I put a lampshade inside the lampshade, so it kind of makes the light a little more diffused. I like it. The chairs I got at um, Habitat for Humanity, they were $30 a piece. How exciting is that? So if we jump way over, that is my little dining room, which I, uh, it's nice to eat dinner at a table. Um, my uh, walk-in closet is back there. There's my uniforms. My bathroom is over here. I have a little vanity here, which is really nice to have all my stuff. Um, we'll, we'll jump way over to, I'm gonna 
put these little butterflies up on the wall. I have some more um, framed that I'll put, uh, I'll grab from Atlanta. My office, which is where I usually play video games, honestly. <laughs> um, and my little kitchen, it's small, but it is uh, perfect. And then here is my unmade bed with some clothes over there and um, a big giant Ikea <laughs> bookcase, which I am using as a bed table and a place to put some plants. I do have lots and lots of books and things, so that will be a great place to put them. And I, uh, when I come in from a trip, I just drop my uh, luggage right here by the door and um, it's just a great place for that and my front door. So that is my apartment. And uh, I am grateful that I had crash pads to uh, spend time in when I needed them. But about eight months in, nine months in, it was really time for me to move into an apartment. Um, and uh, even if you just share an apartment with a roommate or something, uh, better than a crash bed. So there is some tips and hints and some words of warning. And uh, if you have not subscribed, I would really appreciate that. Um, and uh, certainly make a comment. I would love to find out what your experience has been like with a crash pad. Uh, if you have any questions regarding a crash pad or any questions on what it's like to be a brand new flight attendant, feel free. Um, I love to talk. And uh, so I'll thank you very much for your time and uh, fly safe. Have fun. Bye.